What's up guys, welcome back to another video where we take people's content and react to it. And this time we're going to be reacting to Sanji vs. Rock Lee, One Piece vs. Naruto by Death Battle. Let's get into this. There are so many heroes with crazy over-the-top superpowers, but there's one class of character everyone respects. The master of the martial arts. Like Sanji, the sous chef of the straw hat pirates. Oh yeah. And the person I'm, I think I already know who wins, but the person I'm going with is Rock Lee. Because, you know, I haven't really watched One Piece and I don't really care to watch it. But I've seen Naruto and, like, that's the best anime. So I'm going with Rock Lee. But I'm not sure if he wins, but I'll still go with him. Searching for the One Piece. And Rock Lee, the hardworking ninja warrior from the village of Naruto. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Somewhere in the vast ocean is a seafaring land of science, the kingdom of Germa. When the king of germs decided to churn out some kids, fuck? he got an awesome idea. King of How germs. How about he make his kids into killer emotionless super soldiers? What could go wrong? He forced his queen to undergo surgery that would enhance their children during pregnancy. Yeah, she Damn. wasn't much of a fan. So she took a drug meant to counteract the effects to hopefully ensure that at least one of her children was, you know, emotionally stable. A surprisingly low bar to aim for, but hey, good for her. And she pulled it off. While most of her children were violent sociopaths, one oh, showed no signs of their shared superhuman genetics. This is Sanji. Oh, the poor kid didn't have a great childhood. I mean, he was surrounded by actual superhuman bullies. But he found peace in cooking for his mom. Well, uh, until she died, and then he was thrown in a dungeon. Look, Damn, I told you his childhood sucked. Fortunately, Sanji eventually Damn. escaped thanks to some help from his sister, who I guess was slightly less of a sociopath, and made his way across the sea as a cook. Until he was shipwrecked and left marooned. Damn. Poor guy just can't he just catch keeps break, getting pushed. But Sanji found a new daddy in the form of pirate Red Leg Zeph, who trained him in his own martial art, Black Leg Style. Wait, shouldn't that be Red Leg Style? I'm confused. It's an art that focuses exclusively on kicks, which worked out swimmingly for Sanji. No, puns are my job. I don't need you pirating that from me. As a chef, Sanji firmly believes his hands have no place in a fight. To him, they should be kept as pristine as possible for cooking, which is frankly wonderful etiquette. Even if his own life is in serious danger, he will not break this self-imposed rule. Damn. You gotta hand it to him. Black leg is like taking capoeira, taekwondo, and every other martial art with high flying footwork and mixing them all up like a stew. And just like a tasty dish, he named his attacks after a bunch of French words, which I definitely cannot pronounce. Though the most important to recognize is Diable Jean, also known as the Devil Leg. By moving at incredibly high speeds, Sanji builds up friction between the air and his leg until it literally catches on fire. To do so, he'd have to be moving his legs over 11,000 meters per second. Yeah, and that move's Damn, pretty lit. That's pretty fast. Clearly, Sanji's super fast. He's quick enough to keep up with the pirate captain, Luffy, who effortlessly dodged laser beams from a robot man bear guy. It, it's a long story. Yeah, that's pretty that's quick. That's one piece in a nutshell. A very, very long story. Sanji's got plenty of other yeah. skills. He can kick your face so hard it makes you as handsome as that devil George Clooney. Oh, brother. Then he can start blasting and Danny DeVito you back to normal with another. And with the skywalk technique, he can literally walk on air by, listen to this, oh, that's flicking cool. his heels so quickly he creates dozens of miniature sonic booms beneath his feet. That is insane. No yourself, never skipped leg day. In fact, forget the other days, all days are now leg days. Sanji eventually found a true family as a chef for the Straw Hat Pirates. With them at his side, he began a hunt for the All Blue, a mythical location where every ocean in the world connects and all manner of sea life exists. A perfect spot for a chef of the sea. But just like all of us, he had to deal with his first and much crazier family at some point. And when he did, Set the he got an upgrade. This is the Raid Suit, a miraculous outfit with hover boots, invisibility, air boosters for increased kicking power, oh, and a snazzy cape. Conveniently, the suit is stored in an easy-to-carry canister that can be opened for a magical girl transformation, like so. 
Oh, is this beer? Wait a minute. If that's my Wait, what beer, what am I drinking? I'm gonna either need to go to the bathroom or the hospital. While Sanji may not possess the superhuman ability of his siblings, he has learned something similar yet entirely different. Hockey. Gesundheit. This power lets people push their body to new limits in a bunch of different ways. Like with armament hockey, he can make himself hard. Oh and yeah. Doesn't Luffy have that to well? strengthen his limbs for ironclad defense and stronger attacks. However, Sanji's own speciality is Kenbunchoku, or observation hockey. With this, Sanji can detect the presence of others, including through walls. He can even predict future events, at least to some extent. And hanging with the oh, straw hats, nice. let him push his abilities to the limit. He's strong in the freaking world. And he could battle the marine Fujitora, who could summon meteors from the sky. The largest of which, when compared to the island of Dressrosa, appears to have a diameter of over 780 meters. And thus, a kinetic energy of over 12 gigatons of TNT. Okay, so, like, okay. he fought a guy who could basically blow up a whole island in a snap, and then some. Let me know the next time you find a cook who can pull that off. He has his... I don't know if these people are strong, I just... He has his fair share of weaknesses. Because I haven't really watched Sanji it, Sanji sees so himself as a gentleman, and thus refuses to fight a lady at any cost. Even his own life. And, uh, oh, damn. He's absolutely terrified of drag queens. That didn't need well, well. Yeah. but even with the setbacks and a horrifying mm -hmm. childhood, Sanji is a man of the moment, an adventurer with a goal. One day he will surely discover the all blue, and whatever else comes after that. I was looking for a light. Appreciate it. Konoha. The village hidden yes, in the leaves is a land yes. of phenomenal ninja. From Naruto to yep. Sasuke to Kakashi, we've seen them show off their awesome talent on death battle before. Yeah. But one ninja student sought to prove that talent wasn't naturally born. That talent could be achieved through nothing but hard work. Oh yeah, Rock Lee this works hard. Rock Lee. Bro, he works so damn hard. At first, Bull Cut's path to being a ninja was anything but promising. See, the best ninja can use all sorts of ninja magic called ninjutsu or genjutsu, but not Rocky over here. Essentially, Lee was born with a disability, unable to access the living chakra energies within his body the same way his peers could. But yeah, that sucks right there. things difficult for him, he continued to train, pushing himself to become a splendid ninja. Too bad he got paired up with Neji, who might as well have the word prodigy stamped on his forehead. Oh, yeah. Uh, hello, irony. With no real family to speak of, Lee had Neji no one to guide him on his goated. difficult path. Fortunately, he found inspiration in the form of a fellow bowl cut. See, he was pretty goaded, but, you know. Now I to stop him. Individual, Mike Guy, a man who is simultaneously incredibly cool and incredibly weird. Guy saw Lee's potential and trained him to master the art of Taijutsu, a ninja's physical prowess using chakra, body, and mind. So he's not. Oh yeah, when they first introduced Rock Lee, bro, this dude was like so damn good. Like when they first introduced him out, he was like, he was. He was just so damn good. He was way better than Sasuke. Gonna be shooting fireballs or popping up clones of himself like the other guys, but he's gonna learn how to punch harder than anyone. Actually, that's exactly the point of his martial art. Strong fist, a style that's all about shattering bones. Not just any ninja can master the form of strong fist. In the hands of a novice, it's a dangerous technique. One wrong move, and you could accidentally break your own limbs. But Lee quickly oh, got dude, the hang okay. of it, and even learned some awesome moves, like this killer Azuna drop on steroids, the primary lotus. A technique so useful that many other ninja try oh, to yeah. copy it for themselves. What a bunch of cheaters. He's also got this potion, and if he drinks it, he goes into a super zen state that makes him basically invincible. Incorrect as usual, Boomstick. That was due to American censorship. Right, it wasn't a potion, it was sake. Somehow, yeah. Lee's susceptibility it's to alcohol, alcohol turns him into an instant expert in the drunken fist, based on an actual martial art. You know, Wiz, I've always wanted and his to son, try that style He's myself, really good, he knows and, uh, how to do it. I'm not gonna lie, I've had a few. Watch this! Gonna... Uh, oh. Correction. Real drunken boxers only emulate the movements of the inebriated. They're not actually. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, damn. Uh, <laughs> I see you, man. I see you.
Anyway, when Rocky Road isn't totally sloshed, he's got one more ace up his sleeve. The eight gates. In the world of Naruto, oh, yeah, the eight gates is like strong as shit. In the human body, inspired by real world Buddhist teachings of opening oneself to achieve enlightenment. But in Lee's case, it's Especially when Kai a used can it. of ass. Think of it like that horrible myth about humans using only one small part of their brain. Each open gate increases Lee's abilities in some way. For example, the first gate allows Lee to utilize 100% of his body's potential by removing inherent mental and physical inhibitions. The third gate lets him expend enough chakra all at once to perform his signature technique, the Hidden Lotus. Eh, the first few gates are pretty chill, even if they do wear him out. Thing is, the more gates you open, the more dangerous it gets. Yeah, that's... But Lee wasn't afraid. That's By the, the age of 13, he could unlock five of the eight gates. That's more thing that's than crazy. enough to keep up with the likes of Neji and honorary Green Day member Gara. He's almost as quick as Naruto, who's dodged light speed attacks. And when he opened the sixth gate, he used it to slice up a giant meteor. Oh Comparing yeah, the scale I was like, of the meteor to Konoha's mountainside, and assuming Lee contributed his fair share to this group task, he must have produced a force equal to about 230 megatons of TNT. The average nuclear bomb has a yield of about 5 megatons. So Wait, let me see. How much did Sanji do? of which, when compared to the island of Dressrosa, appears to have a diameter of over 780 meters, and thus a kinetic energy of over 12 gigatons of TNT. Damn. TNT. Yes, gigatons. So, like, he fought a guy who could basically blow up a whole... He opened the sixth gate. And Rock he Lee used it has. to slice up a giant meteor. Comparing the scale of the meteor to Konoha's mountainside, and assuming Lee contributed his fair share to this group task, he must have produced a force equal to about 230 megatons of TNT. The average nuclear Isn't bomb has a yield more? of about fucking yeah, by gigatons six is more Lee right. is like having 50 nukes exploding in your face. Now, Lee has admittedly never used the Damn, last two gates. However, there are multiple claims that he's mastered them by adulthood. And frankly, as the successor to Might Guy, who did unlock all eight gates, Lee should be comparable. Guy could make a blast the size of an island with the seventh gate. With the eighth, he could go head to head with the ultimate big bad, Madara. Yep. This that shit was would crazy. Pack in more power than when Naruto's <coughs> chakra blew a hole through the moon. A 400 petaton explosion. That's shit. way bigger than 50 nukes. Hell, the eighth gate can bend the fabric of space. Just one small problem. Opening the 8th gate puts an immense toll on the yeah. body. The moment you open it, you've essentially guaranteed your own death. Yeah, but who cares as long as you take your foe with you. Under Guy's training and with the help of his friends, Lee has shown that he is indeed a splendid ninja. Though he never quite got the chance to prove himself against Neji. Well, according to the wisdom of Gammy Boomstick, one's dead and the other isn't, so I think I know who won. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Stick. Now the villagers expert instructor in Damn, you didn't have to say like with that, the kid man. of his very own, it seems Rock Lee's hard work truly did pay off in the end. To protect and maintain one's own ninja way. The third gate, gate of life, open! All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibility. Okay, I think I know who wins, but the person I want to win is... I want Rock Lee to win, but I think Sanji's the one that wins, but I want Rock Lee to win, though. But first, if you want some of Lee and Sanji's fiery determination in the sack, check out Blue Chew! Uh, I refuse to eat this. It's far too mild. Lacking in the fiery youth of truth... This kind of sounds like this is like Mark. I think his name's Mark from RTC World. Spicy curry! Perfectly balanced curry around. <laughs> oh, I see. Wait, let me turn it down. Oh, damn. He said his shit is ass. Damn, kick the rain to that thing. Oh, already chunking. Say hell no, I'm out of here. But that's cool how he could see, he could detect him. Oh 
difficulty. Chilly, you're going too crazy. Okay, yo, he got his thing. Damn, he is really kicking. No leak, come on. Just like that. That's fuck. He really finished him, and he only has one leg now. Himself and likely has drained all of his life with his speed and observation hockey. He handled even the unpredictable drunken fist. And while the seventh gate meant Lee could probably blow up an island, that's not as big as the meteor yeah. straw hats could handle. Simply put, Lee had only one somewhat reliable method of a possible victory the eighth gate. A suicide move he's never actually used before. Not really the best argument for a win on its own. But gate number eight could take on Madara. Sanji's tough, yeah, but he's definitely not on that guy's level. A couple big hits from the eighth gate, and Sanji's nothing but pace. So, what gives? Well, Lee would have to hit him first. While Sanji's power may not compare to the eighth gate, his while Sanji's power may not compare to the eighth gate, his speed is far beyond. Recall when his fellow rubber rabble rouser Luffy uh, very patiently waited for a light speed laser to reach him before dodging him. To pull Damn. this off, Luffy would have had to move 13 times faster than light. Sanji can regularly keep up with Luffy, and this was before he even got his super fa- Eighth Gate is incredible. If we were to run this fight a hundred more rounds, Lee would surely land a winning blow with it a few times. But more often than not, Sanji's speed is pulling this one off. Given his speed, raid suit, observation hockey, and his fiery footwork, Sanji had everything he needed to outlast Lee's youthful determination for a victory. I guess you could say he had a leg up on Rock Lee, hand over fist. Or I guess foot over fist, but you get it. The winner is Sanji. Damn. Thanks for watching right. this episode of Death Battle. Well, if you enjoyed that, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you want more, comment down that you want more. Peace out.